the issue of hate crimes legislation that continues to be advanced on Capitol Hill um, is part of a larger effort that we already see working in state statutes. And however well-intentioned uh, hate crime statutes around the country have been used uh, to um, quell religious expression. If most of this grew out of um, a few cases involving homosexuals, and they want to call that a hate crime. So if someone, in effect, were to hurt a homosexual or maybe not hire one, that would become a hate crime, which is punished more than if, if you just hurt uh, someone else. Individual pastors who may wish to preach out of Romans chapter 1 about what the Bible teaches about homosexual behavior, but they could be um, uh, charged or... Uh, or be subject to intimidation for simply expressing a biblical worldview on the issue of homosexual behavior. We know that because among other reasons, Congressman Louis Gomer and Judiciary Committee introduced an amendment that says, well, hate crimes uh, on, on homosexual stuff does not apply to a pastor standing in the pulpit and reading Romans 127. Well, the committee voted that down and said, no, 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 that's why we're doing this. We want pastors to stop saying that kind of nonsense. So literally the fact that we had that amendment offered to exclude pastors reading the Bible as not being a hate crime, the fact that it was voted down in Congress says explicitly what they're after. Well, we've seen it even recently in, in New Hampshire where the Democrat governor of New Hampshire says, okay, I'll do, the, I'll, I'll do the gay marriage kind of equivalent stuff, but you've got to give protection, religious protection for pastors so they do have the right to speak their conscience and speak biblical truth. The legislature said, no, 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 we're not going to give that exception to pastors. So in New Hampshire as well, they're saying, no, we, we don't want to exclude pastors from the hate crimes. If they're going to say homosexuality is a sin and gay marriage is wrong, that's a hate crime. And, and so we specifically have seen that, and that's not being covered in the news and the media. It, what you're doing is raising the status in our society of, of people who are countercultural in a lot of ways. So hate crimes perverts our justice system. We think the, the larger and more pernicious aspect of hate crimes legislation is the chilling effect that it has. It's the sermons that never get preached uh, because uh, pastors uh, uh, and uh, uh, rabbis and other religious leaders might simply not want to run the risk of running afoul uh, of legislation having that bears upon uh, how one addresses particular moral issues. If hate crimes passes, you can be assured that if you have a sermon speaking out, they'll come after you. Now, they may lose in court, but what it's going to be is they'll come after you because it may cost you $100,000 to defend yourself to win the case in court, and that by itself is sufficient intimidation. That's often what ACLU does to schools to keep them from having any kind of religious expression. It's not that the school won't win, but it's the school might have to pay $100,000 to defend itself before it wins that right. So rather than put out that kind of money, they just shut up and they don't do things. And the nine nations that now have the equivalent of gay marriage, whether you look at Canada or Spain or England that's now moved in that direction, Scandinavian countries, they all have legislation to keep you from criticizing homosexual marriage. So it's not just a hate crime that you commit a crime, it's even the criticism. It's a, it's a limitation on the free speech, particularly of Christians and Bible-believing Christians to speak out on an issue they, they think is morally significant. Hate crimes legislation, as it has been presented in the nation today, has the opportunity to be used as a way of reaching into the church through thought crimes. It has an opportunity to try to hinder the preaching of the gospel. So I believe it's very, very important that we stand against it. Now, we must, we must, we must recognize that that law is going to be impacted by what happens in the Senate of the United States. And in this current political environment, there needs to be a voice that comes from you, that comes from your family, that comes from your church. There needs to be a letter, an email, a phone call that you make to let the senators know especially that you are not in favor of such a legislation. And at the Senate level, this thing can be turned around if we'll act together as one church united under God.